Hello, everyone. I completely forgot to remove people's cams, so we're just going to have to deal with the brief sight of empty chairs. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Hello. Um, so obviously, Sam is uh, Sam's not quite back yet, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, we need to get a. Uh, obviously, we're L entering into Troika combat, which means we need to get an initiative stack set up while John's doing that. Um, I would just like to remind all of you out there that one of the points behind this one-shot um, stream is that we're running a Kickstarter campaign. The soft is our setting, which we've designed and we're publishing as uh, a Troika zine. Uh, we are now, it has to be said, in the final 24 hours of the, uh, of the campaign. I'm not sure how that's calculated, so I don't know if the, the alerts for people who've saved it have gone out yet or not. But either way, um, if you are interested in purchasing a wonderful detailed settings in for the soft, then uh, please do pop to that campaign. We have it linked in chat if you're watching this via some other method in the next 24 hours, which I'm not sure what you would be. Um, then just Google... Um, either the soft TTRPG or search for it on Kickstarter, and you will find it. And it's not that much money. It's not that much money, all right? You can spare it. That's all I'm saying. Um, so there we go. Uh, you need to we... sound like Mumi now. Well, you know, uh, he is he is me. It's just five him. silver pieces. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it is just five silver pieces with 10 silver pieces for a special thing. Um, so there we go. Um, the answer to your question is no, John. Um, the the Nobel Donna does not have initiative. She, she's outside the combat, it's fine. Um, I mean, she's involved, but I'm not going to simulate her stuff. I don't care. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, have we got the initiative stack set up? Yes. I think yes. I can actually present it. Ooh. Yep. We're on ten to hooks. Yes, yes. There we go. Lovely. Um, so, oh yeah, of course. The 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 little little knight has some uh, whose existence I continually forget has uh, things in the the initiative stack as well. So, how uh, combat initiative works in Troika is you add a certain number of. Um, sort of tokens to a stack, you jumble them all up, and then you draw them randomly, which means you don't really know when the end of a round is going to come, it, and it could very easily arrive before uh, people have taken any turns at all. Uh, so it's all very random, very very chaotic, and with that in mind, John, why don't we draw the first off the pile? It is also worth saying that we are using the technical grimoire uh, oh, yes. initiative generator, which yes. is a very, good, very good thing. Good. And also has an emergency character generator in case you should need that. Uh, which we used last time, I believe. Uh, so there we ah, go. I see. Last up. Okay. The mysterious friend, so the mysterious friend is on it um, and leaps into the fray with, uh, with his little lance against these fearsome dust bunnies. Um, John, do you want to roll for the, uh, for the henchman? Yeah. Um, so combat attacks work pretty much the same as other like roll under, um, or they're, well, they're roll versus actually. Um, so they work completely different. So I'm talking rubbish. Uh, you roll two d six. You add any applicable bonuses such as your advanced skills. Um, then you compare the results, and the higher total wins. Um, and that person does does damage, and that's for melee combat, right? So whenever you're engaging in melee combat, it's like kind of a gamble, but between who's going to win. So that's that's basically it. Um, so I'm going to be rolling two d six, and then I'm going to be adding the um, the skill of the dust bunnies, and John will be rolling two d six and adding the skill of the mysterious stranger. Plus, I don't do, does the mysterious friend have an actual combat skill as well? Or no, he just has skill, stamina, initiative, right. armor, and his damage. So we just roll add our skills to these. Yeah. Um, so the dust bunnies have they've rolled pretty well, John. They've rolled sixteen. Well, mysterious friend rolled nineteen. Nineteen. Well, that's better. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, what's does it list? What his weapon is? I mean, it's a lance, right? But... Yeah, it's a lance with damage as a spear. Cool. Do you want to roll that then? Yeah, is that just a d six? Yeah, it's a d six, and I'll I'll tell you the damage it does. 
uh, rolls a four, so that is six damage. That is six damage. Uh, the mysterious friend kind of bounds forwards uh, across the rocks and uh, sort of jabs out with his, his lance and tips it back up with a little dust bunny on the end of it, kind of going, uh, kind of riding around impaled by this lance. He goes, and like whips it off and it goes cart kind of like cartwheeling through the air, spraying um, some stuffing behind it. Uh, can we have the next turn, please? I just want to say in my head, the dust bunnies are all animated with that like old fashioned Harry Housen stop motion. Sure. Kind of yeah, why not? Uh, it's one of the dust bunnies. One of the dust bunnies. Uh, one of the dust bunnies is going to attack one of you. And by one of you, I mean one of you who isn't uh, Krongle, because Sam's not here. Um, and that person is going to be Captain Kakajin. So uh, a dust bunny comes kind of flying through the air towards you. You can see that although they mostly look like these squidgy, soft little things, it does have a little mouth in the front of it that kind of like folds open full of nasty, sharp little needle teeth. Um, so Captain Kakajin, uh, do you have any um, kind of like weapon skills of any kind? Yes, uh, so I have three in fusel fighting and one in sword fighting. Okay, it's coming right for you, so it's going to have to be a sword. You have to draw. Yep. I did we say you the fusel and the sword you have are the captain's old ones that you picked up off the ground? I think that makes a lot of sense. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what you want to do is make a sword fighting roll. So you want to add your skill and your sword fighting advanced skill, and then roll 2d6 and add, to, and add those all together. That is, unfortunately, a 6 over 5. 6 over 5? As in I rolled 6, and my skill total is 5, so i No, 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 you add them all together. Oh! So you add your skill and your sword right. fighting and the 2d6 that you roll. Uh, uh, in which case, that's um, 11, isn't it? Yeah. 11. Uh, in which case, the Dust Bunny does win. Mm. Um, so, do you have any armor? Is what mm, I would ask. I don't think so, no. Yeah, unless it's listed, you won't do. Um, okay. So, with that in mind, uh, let me roll for damage. That's a four. Um, yeah, the Dust Bunny is going to gnaw on you for uh, three worth of stamina. And it's probably kind of like hanging okay. on to you, kind of like. Um, I would also like you to now make a tog check uh, against a difficulty of four. So what you want to do is get over four on 2d6. Okay. That's a nine. Okay. Absolutely fine then. Uh, let's have the next turn, please, John. Nelime. I'm going to try to punch a bunny. Punch a bunny. Uh, why not? Um, absolutely. Uh, so, um, with that in mind, let me just check something about there. No, they don't have any. It doesn't affect these ones as Chris has written them, because these are a best year entry that Chris has written up. Um, so, yeah, just uh, make a standard punching check. Well, oh no, fist fighting. You've got the fist fighting skill, right? So skill yeah. plus fist fighting plus 2d6 for a total result. So and, my 2d6 uh, is go. 8. Um, I've got a 1 in fist fighting. Plus, so that's uh, 13 total. Well, they got 16 again because they're rolling like demons. Um, so do you have any armor? Uh, oh, I don't think I do. Um... I do not. No. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, I've got my yellow pep uh, pepop outfit uh, counts as modest armor, so minus two damage. Okay, um, that's pretty good. Uh, so when something's flagged as uh, uh, like armor of two or armor of one or whatever, just so we know, it doesn't reduce from the damage you take. It knocks the die result for damage back an equal number of, of stages. Um, so they rolled a five for their damage, and so I'm going to knock it back to a three, which does actually mean three uh, in this specific case. So you also have a dust bunny hanging off you, which is gnawing away for three points of stamina. Um, and also we have a Sam, so I'm going to bring him in. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, and also, could you make a tog check against difficulty four, please? So roll five or over on 2d6 is what you want to do. 
I rolled a six. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's have the next turn, please, John. Any enemy. Okay, so uh, I feel like Captain Capuchin has already been mildly swarmed. So we're going to have um, another player get dust bunnied in the face. Uh, and it's going to be Queen Katrine. So can you make your sword roll against uh, the dust bunny, please? That is only a 15. That's still more than they have. So why don't you roll damage for me? Good. I only rolled two. You have a long sword, right? Yes, which is six damage. Yeah. Uh, basically, this dust bunny comes kind of flying through the air towards you. Um, and it, it's like target practice, you know, when you'd have your um, your inferiors lob like watermelons and, and uh, maybe a, a large orange or two towards you back in the gardens and you would just slice them through the air, fruit ninja style. Uh, and you just do this with the dust bunny, which just kind of gives a squeak as it comes apart and like showers you with a few bits and pieces of stuffing um, as it flops to the ground. Next turn. It's another bunny. Another enemy. Another bunny. Let's uh, roll randomly. This one's going to be coming for Nelline. Um, and uh, in fact, you know what? It can be the same one. It's just trying to chomp down on you, you know? Um, what well, that's already clinging to you. So why don't you uh, give us a, a, a take it another fist fighting roll? Oh, that was good. I rolled eleven on the dice, um, and then if it's plus fist fighting, that's another five, so sixteen. You got five so in fist fighting. Yeah. Wow. Plus skill. So it'll be one in fist fighting plus the four skill. Yeah, yeah, that's the oh, total. I yeah, see. yeah. See, I was like, Jesus. Just in fist <laughs> so sorry. What was the what was the total again? Sorry. Uh, so the total was sixteen. Okay. Yeah, you definitely win. Um, so uh, roll for your damage, which will just be unarmed damage, I guess. Hang on. This am I? I'm still I'm doing damage. It, it has attacked me, but I am still doing damage to it. Is that... Yeah, every every yeah. melee yeah. interaction is basically one of you wins and does damage. Okay, cool. Um, damage. All, all oh. damage is just a d6 roll. Oh, sorry. Right. One and then it, you refer to it on a table of like. Oh yes, that, that's just a yeah, that's just a one, which I think is it's, it's a one. Uh, just a, a one on the damage for an arm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it is just a one. And basically, you you thwack your fist on this dust bunny trying to gnaw on you. And your fist, it has to be said, does basically just sink into it. Um, and doesn't appear to do very much, although it gives a kind of little disgruntled, um, like, noise. Uh, but other than that, not too much of an effect. But, you know, better than being gnawed on. Uh, next turn, please, John. Krongle Pludge Funkler, what are we doing? So what's going on <laughs> from Krongle's perspective? <clears throat> um, well, first of all, I think your mic has switched um, uh -huh. or is in a weird position or something. Um, but secondly of all, uh, just dust bunnies swarming over everyone, jumping around, flying around, little gnawing teeth. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word, that was horrible. <laughs> uh... Am I, like, because I was kind of surrounded with two of them, are they right on top of me right now, physically? We're not really getting into the the the, the, the geography of these things that much. There's just dust bunnies everywhere, and they're trying to bite everyone. Okay, uh, I think I will, uh, because I realise my one kind of damagey attack spell is really quite poor against soft things, brittle twigs, which makes them suffer broken bones. <laughs> Right, yeah, that you suspect that isn't going to work on these at all. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to try and knife whichever's nearest to me with my knife. That seems fair. Uh, well, mm -hmm. then, why don't you roll for your combat, which is 2d6 plus skill plus advanced, mm -hmm. relevant advanced skill. And cool. it's in competition against them. And for once, they've rolled shit. So, 13 for me. Oh, yeah, they get nothing near that. Uh, so mm -hmm. why do you roll a d6 uh, on uh, for the damage table? That's a one. <laughs> That's a one. Uh, okay, well, 
you do jab into one of them uh, rather sharply with the knife, and you leave a... Uh, you know, it looks like what it would look like if you stabbed a, a cuddly toy, right? Um, like a bit of like fluffy stuffing pops out of it, and it kind of wriggles unpleasantly uh, off the end of the knife, and then starts like jumping up and uh, snapping at you again. Uh, but you've definitely done something to it. Um, next turn, please, John. It's another Any bunny. Enemy. It's another bunny. Um, we will go with. I think have we had everyone now. No, we haven't had another. We haven't had one attacking Krongle. So let's have while you're trying to deal with this one that's kind of like coming up at you. In fact, we'll use the same one. Uh, the one you stabbed is like leaping up manically for you again and trying to like nibble your face with those knee needle sharp teeth. Um, so let's just have another roll. Let's have another roll straight after the last one. Mm -hmm. Troika. Uh, it's exactly the same. Thirteen. Uh, yeah, that's better than theirs, I think. Yes, just by one. Um, okay, give me another damage roll. Okay. Two. <laughs> there we go. Um, but you know what? That's enough. Uh, you jab out with your knife again, and something in like the seeming of the uh, of the the creature bursts open, and you kind of like stab into it, and it sort of like explodes over your hand and covers it with like little bits of down and stuffing. <laughs> and for a moment, because you're like stabbing something with a knife, you kind of go oh. Oh, oh. And then just realize that your <laughs> hand is just covered in stuffing, and that's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. um, Other than the terrible allergy to stuffing, that no, no. <laughs> yeah, but it is dead, so you know. Uh, next, John, please. End of round. End of round. Let's start a new round. So, how many enemies are there now? Does do the enemy tokens stay the same? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's the same. There's way more that like there's loads of dust bunnies. It's cool. just to simulate this kind of like swarm of them. So, Captain Cacogen. Okay. Now you get to choose if you use your fusil this time around. Like you don't have to keep fighting with the sword. It's just the one that attacked you was melee. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah, I think we'll use the fusil this time. You so. could even try and like awkwardly like shoot the one off you. <laughs> if you wanted that sounds harder um, yeah. oh, oh yeah so I don't think I will I, th I think sure. I think Kakujin will sort of leave it leave it nibbling on, on one I hesitate to use the word shoulder but yeah yeah one, one random zone of your peripheral yeah. appendage okay cool um, so yeah so roll... Um, yeah roll a 2d6 um, oh no hang on let me, double, let me double check the ranged rules actually Okay. Uh, just because uh... no, no, this is like a skill roll, right? Uh, is it rolling versus the skill no, or oh no, no, it is it is exactly the same as melee, only like you don't get counter attacked if you if you lose it. So basically they're rolling their they're rolling their skill. What you will do is roll 2d6, add your skill, add your fusil on top of that. Or your fusil advanced skill, whatever. You know what I mean. And yeah. for the total. Okay. So that's gonna be two D six plus seven. And that's a one and six, so that's fourteen. Okay, you win. Um Ooh. would you like to roll your D six for damage? Uh is that oh is it one D six for a fusil? Yeah, that... it's it's one D six for everything and there's a table to refer to. Okay. But I've got the table in front of me. That is a six. Okay, yeah. Uh, you aim your fusil at uh, a dust bunny that's like leaping majestically uh, across the, the ruin to about to gnaw into the back of Queen Katrine's head, and you kind of like aim and pull the trigger via, well, I don't know if you've got fingers, but like um, via whatever weird bit of your body fits around the trigger, and the dust bunny just kind of like like explodes completely, sends bits of stuffing and fabric flying everywhere. And all the other dust bunnies kind of like the dust bunny that was leaping had like a little weird fringe around its neck, like a little rough of like um coiled fabric that maybe signified it out as like the most important of the dust bunnies in some way. And all the other dust bunnies kind of like look at the the bits of it flying off kind of like <laughs> <laughs> like and uh, one of them goes and they all just 
like burst away from each other, dive into holes in the nearby cushions, uh, away under the stones, and before you know it, um, there's there's kind of nothing left under the other than the bits of stuffing and fabric that indicates that you chopped and shot and battered bits of them apart. Do I? Am I still holding the tiny one that drew me in at first? Uh, no, no, no. You didn't get your hands on it. You like oh. reached out for it in a kind of like, hey, little fella. And then they all went, Wah! in a kind of like sort of clever girl moment. I will sadly look around for the adorable one, even no, there's no hope of finding oh, it. It's, it's, it's like, the, I'm actually going to say that was the one that was trying to bite your face. <laughs> I see. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so there we go. Um, uh, the noble Donna kind of dusts herself off. She was like, sort of stood on top of a nearby uh, uh, stone, kind of with a long, like, curved saber, kind of like going, ha ha, ha ha, and like, sort of like slicing any that sort of came near her. Uh, and she turns around and kind of like wipes the, the fluff that's tangled on her blade off with a bit of cloth um, and says, Well, aren't you all handy in a rough spot, eh? Some of you. Uh, did you? Where did you say you were going exactly? Yeah, well, here to the ruins in a way. Um, we well, had a guide. We do have a mysterious pillow that seems to divine some sort of direction but ultimately uh, i think our our main aim is to get out before we die of boredom or other misadventure yes yes well i've got a little proposition for you all if you're willing to hear it by all means yes. As I said, I've had some rather nice finds here today. And in the last couple of days, in fact, I've written a bunch of them up in my papers. They need returning to my brother at Spillowville. I can pay handsomely and also can refer you to some individuals who, well, they might be able to get you out, so to speak. I know new travellers here can be rather perturbed at the notion of staying. Yes, that... Uh... Uh, some coin, you say? Out, you say? Yes. Oh, yes. You'd be you'd be paid, and yes, referred to uh, colleagues who uh, made great strides in the progress of getting people out. Great strides. Oh, it's, it's been done a few times. Yes. Oh, bringing nice people in is a lot easier. So happy in bed. You had all the chance to catch up on your sleep back at the temple. It's not the sleep I'm worried about. <laughs> it's... Hmm. I... It'd be nice to see some sky. How... You said earlier it was day. How do you even know it's day in this place? At the level, Donna. All Spelunkers keep a uh, timepiece handy with which we regulate our time here in the soft. So... No sky at all then. Gotcha. Okay. Well, oh, good you're lord! You're one no. of these spelunkers that Mumi mentioned, then. Spelunkers, the, and yes. Yes. So diving well, the, 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 do you consider this sort of cave of sorts? Then is that? Uh, it's an enclosed environment, certainly. Yes, I suppose of, so. Of a kind. We are explorers, adventurers, questers, if you will, and seekers of knowledge. Well. I, I think be a dangerous thing. I think I safely speak for all of us with a, a yes. Yes, we would like to make money and leave if possible. Um, where, where are we going? Well, that is it's thought of an interesting question. Um, let me let me give you a couple of things. Uh, she rummages around in her bags and brings out a, a number of small devices. One she hands over to you, and it looks essentially like a compass. Uh, and she says, now, this does not follow north, as most compasses do. No, instead, it is following its way back to the Great Magnet in Spillowville. Uh, just keep it rough. Try and roughly follow it, and it will take you there. 
one of the things you need to learn, my friends, about the fray, the wilderness that makes up the most of um, the, the soft mass is it is mercurial in nature. Things move and shift according to, well, we hope random design. Um, and therefore it is difficult to give you things such as landmarks or directions. But if you mostly stick to that uh, to that compass, you should be fairly fine. Um, there are rotations of various sites of coordinated flux at the moment that may lead you a merry way off course, but well, you can take care of yourselves. Um, here are the papers for transport to my brother. Thank you. Uh, a, a writ of payment intro introduction for when you arrive. Yes. And also there is uh, this. Who is the most responsible and aware among you? Oh, that will be me, obviously. Yeah. The well, captain no, is... Uh is a, a figure of some authority, I think. Well, I mean, I saw yeah, him he is my it, designated companion. Yes, I just think, Your Majesty, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't, you know, put any tasks or employment upon you. That seems altogether too menial, does it not? Well, that is very considerate of you, and I'm, I'm glad you're finally getting into the swing of things as a part of my royal coterie. Um, but yes, yes, the, the yellow one is quite correct. The, the captain will do all these matters. I'm looking nervously between the forgetful queen and the strange blob as our two best prospects for this. <laughs> um, so, so sorry, did we come to a conclusion on who is the most responsible captain. member of the group? The captain. Um, uh, the Nobel Donna, like, like, takes out what looks like basically a little um, silverish box with uh, a little like yellow light on it and passes it over rather gingerly to Captain Kakajin, um, at least to, to one of his, you know, tentacles or appendages in some way and says, well, yes, um, this, my dear fellow, this is a tog counter. Um, it is designed uh, to alert you to when you are in uh, more robustly soft areas uh, if that's not something of a, a contradiction in terms. Um, I uh, programmed it to make the least expected noise I could think of in these environs. Uh, of course, the noble call of the multigalactic semi-crested skewbill duck, uh, of which my family carries a representation on our coat of arms. Um, I don't really have the time to explain the whereby's and wherefores of uh, TOG to you, but if you do encounter a high TOG zone, uh, you should um, chivy yourselves along. Sharpish. Kakajan takes the proffered item and then just sort of subsumes it into its mass. Sure. <laughs> First for later. <laughs> yeah, for safekeeping. Perhaps not a bad idea, actually. Um, in either case, you have all you need to be going on with, and uh, I suppose good luck. Sorry, Matt, did. Did she give us a compass? Yeah. As well. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we've got compass and a tog counter. Yeah. And you know what? Who's going to take the compass? <laughs> the as the only person to go. Me. Like I'm happy that Crongle went. Yep. It's the one thing I've just grabbed. <laughs> uh, just a, a, a quick question before we go. Uh, between your yourself and your good brother, uh, which one of you is the oldest? We're twins. But which one of you is the oldest? I don't rightly know, really. It's hmm. not terribly important. We're quite far down the line of succession. Ah, I see. Well, and the rest of your family are in... Elsewhere. Spillerville. That's... Yeah, there's, a, there's a couple of our cousins in Spillerville, but most of them will be back near Troika. Ah, I see. Well, it has been a pleasure meeting you, good lady. Of course. She sketches a rather elaborate bow. And as I say, thank you, and very, very good luck to you all. 
Nelheim is quietly wondering to herself what the difference is between north and the thing that the compass points to that's the giant magnetic Sure, yeah, yeah. Makes a point to that. But but yeah, effectively it is pointing to magnetic north, right? Mm. But like um, still a bill. (laughs) It's just magnetic north is an arbitrary settlement placed in that moves Mm. around the south. Um So we'll start following the compass then, walk in that direction and seeing if we find a hole in the softness to go through. Yeah, there, there's lots of kind of like little passageways and tunnels out of this like ruined just, area. Just before we head down those tunnels, can I just ask what uh, sorry, what is your brother's name? Oh god. Ingi had to, didn't you? Um, his <laughs> name uh, his name is uh, Aloysius de Grubworthy. Wonderful. We'll, we'll find him. You won't. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, you're expected to get to the destination. Good, good <laughs> chances of that, given I didn't this know is, his name. This um, is Troika. <laughs> so, um, this bodes um, as well as Nelheim would expect. <laughs> it's in keeping. It's in keeping. Of all the characters so, to ask that, I feel like that's like a, a future premonition yeah, from Nelheim there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so, Um, Over the next few hours of travel, uh, you begin to get some sense of why Mumi and the Noble Donna talked of the wilderness of the soft in slightly subdued, fearful tones. Many tunnels, chambers, and passageways pass you by. Some carry the multicolored furnishings of the temple and its environs. Others seem to be dominated by one form uh, or color or both. Uh, For example, for... um, Nearly an hour, you tread gingerly in low pathways composed entirely of offensively pastel pink bedclothes, almost seeming to curl between your toes and clog up your walking gait. Your sight begins to blur somewhat before the hour is done, the gentle pink light starting to become disorienting and discombobulating in equal measure. That isn't the only sense led astray by this fray. You start to hear things. Low rustles and soft noises as if the blankets and pillows around you are shifting. At random? Maybe? Or, as you start to suspect with a growing lump of dread in the pit of your stomach, with some kind of alien intent. Louder, unrecognisable noises from far away are audible as heavily dampened echoes. And altogether you come to the conclusion that you very much understand why the temple dwellers stayed in their slightly miserable little town. The only other living creature you have seen for hours is a swiftly glimpsed black cat trotting along a side passage. So, um, oh, and there's an additional thing, um, and this is for the Queen. Um, Ever since you left the Golden Down Ruin, you have had an unpleasant sensation of being followed. Occasionally you glance over your shoulder in a particularly long corridor of hanging rugs, and thought you saw an indistinct white figure a long way behind you, though strangely never getting any closer. When you, if you try and like draw anyone else's attention to this, it's it's not there. It's gone. That's just for the queen. I'm sure that's nothing to worry about. I'm sure, it's absolutely fine. Um, so. Uh, as you, uh, as the party passes through a chamber with a small dip in the middle, lined with cushions, uh, as if for a gathering of individuals, uh, I would like um, all of you. Shall I do that? No, I'll just, I'll just do something here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like. Um, how am I going to count this, Captain Kakajan, Please. I would like you to, I think, test your luck. Is that it? Oh, no, it's... Yeah, I would like you to test your luck. Um, How you do that is... I think it's just rolling 2d6 and getting under your luck, right? I Uh, think. Is that the thing? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, roll equal to or less your current luck and then reduce your luck by one. Okay. That... Luck recover after last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should recover back up to whatever the maximum is. But oh god, what is the maximum? It's what it'll be. Whatever I told you, it was. Um, oh right. Well, 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 no, I didn't tell you it was. It'll be. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of uh, talking to Sam at the beginning of the thing with with his character sheet. Yeah, I, I don't know what it will have originally been at the beginning. Uh, I kind yeah. of 
Rolling, it's 1d6 plus 6 for the, for the mm -hmm. starting stat. Right. I think right. if I, I'm think, thinking back to the previous, I think I, I burned one luck in the previous thing. It seems likely. I didn't ask for too many luck rolls last time, so I'm yeah, happy I think, for that to be the, the... I think it was just the one. Either way, I failed, because that makes my luck 6, and I've rolled sure. a 7. Sure, Your luck absolutely. would be a 7 minimum. Yeah. Yeah, d6 plus it 1. be 1d6 one, plus 6. Six. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, I yeah, must yeah. have. I was down to five, but I guess I must have done it twice. I'd spent two. Okay. I think I did roll badly on luck when I set it up. So yeah, yeah. maybe it was seven. So, so I rolled seven. Been... So, does, um, so yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Let's say it's seven. And yeah, okay. absolutely, you do succeed. Uh, in which case, um, the, uh, the sudden attack on you is reduced by one le by, uh, let's say, one level. Uh, Wonderful. Which is going to be that's going down to that, so it is impactful. Um, Kakajin, you feel a very sudden, sharp bite at your your ankle, uh, and when you look down, bold view to assume is... I have an ankle, oh, an ankle, <laughs> an ankle analog. Um, you, uh, there is a large cushion with a gaping, slavering maw making uncomfortable gurgling and giggling noises. It is locked on to your ankle analog and kind of like <laughs> um, it's bitten quite deep for four stamina to be precise oof gnarly okay it looks like you could probably get it off with just a you know a solid thump or a strike from your sword yes i think nothing fancy i'll just kind of just try and try and whack it whack with it. the sword and you, you absolutely do do that. And you don't need to roll to hit. It's just like crammed onto the end of your leg. You thwack it and it, it drops off. It carries on with its kind of like um, gurgling and giggling. It, but it can really only shuffle and like jump itself around very slowly. So it can be completely avoided from, from happening again. It seems to be perhaps some kind of ambush predator. Um, I would, however, like you to make a tog test at level five. So that's a roll right. of six or higher that you need. That is a seven. Yeah, go, I'm quite absolutely. lucky with these tog rolls. Absolutely fine. Um, yeah, it's just there, kind of gurgling and, and making unpleasant slavering noises. And it's, it doesn't seem to be able to catch up to you in any way now that you've uh, got it off your leg. Okay. Um... I'm just going to check something very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, okay, 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 it's too I have a spell called Languages. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think Kakajin is going to try to communicate with this rabid pillow creature. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the first thing I need to do is make a a, a languages a, a skill plus languages roll, right? To Correct. Uh, and you also need to spend one stamina. Yeah, because it's a one pointer. Oh, I'm getting quite low here. Um, right. So that's, that's quite hard, though. No, I failed that miserably. <laughs> uh, my fourth skill is so difficult. Um, yeah, I rolled the. Uh, 10 out of i needed you, five well. you try to kind of encant your uh the the skill to to kind of receive the language of this creature and you listen very carefully for a good few seconds and what you hear can be best described as <laughs> so yeah that checks out <laughs> you can um have your like rations things if you want to Get yeah, yeah, you can eat, back, eat rations if you want to get stamina back. I will do that because I'm down to twelve out of twenty-one. So yeah, um, how much do I get back for a ration? One d six. One d six. Yeah, okay, I'll do. I'll do, do that. that up to three times a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and also if you sleep for eight hours, you regain two d six in general. So every okay. time like a day ends, we can we can do that. Cool. Okay, uh, we're just moving on from this little soft mimic thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, uh, oh yeah, as Steve has reminded us in chat, Handley, let me know by the way if anyone rolls a double six on their um, spells. 
because that's a that's an oops table roll um, of stuff. So um, you proceed through the um, the fray for a little while longer, maybe another couple of hours, um, and the the sort of next thing you you encounter through this warren of little passageways and crawl spaces and and open uh, more open chambers. Um, is that you emerge, you kind of hear people ahead of you at first, uh, and sort of maybe ready your weapons a little bit, but when you emerge, it doesn't seem like a th- much of a threat. Um, you s- What you see is a quite a few um, skinny individuals and children being encouraged to wriggle into the gaps of a large wall of cushions, pillows and armrests by a heavy set individual in threadbare red silks with what looks like a long pike. He is uh, regularly taking huffs from a large snuff case and keeps up his encouragement by repeating the phrase, there's gold in the gaps there, gold in the gaps. Go on, you lot, gold in the gaps. Um, he's kind of not overtly bullying or threatening the youngsters, but neither do they seem terribly happy to be doing what they're doing. Uh, there's a fluffy white cat sitting uh, atop a large pillow in the wall, occasionally lazily batting at anyone coming nearby. He turns around he... and kind of sees you there and kind of goes goes back to his work. Uh, uh, th- this guy in the red robes, is that? does it look like the same red robes of the Temple Breast folks? Yeah. They, they do, but they're very threadbare and knackered, you know? Yeah. Okay. You said he looked like he was bullying. Like, how unhappy do the people look? They no, like I said he, 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 he doesn't look like he's bullying. Like, what it is, it, the environment is he's the shift manager, mm-hmm. and they really don't like their jobs. Yeah, okay. That's the vibe, right? And they're not afraid of showing it. Like, every time they wriggle out of the thing, they're like, ugh. But he's and he does have a big pike, but he's like he's mostly using it to like slightly adjust the pillows for them or to go, oh there, like pointing, pointing into mm-hmm. a gap. He's not oh, like okay. jabbing them or anything. So it's it's a whole gray area. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Basically, children in a mine is sure. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah, sure. Um are, are they obviously coming out with gold? Um uh, they're, they're coming out with lots of bits and pieces of stuff. Some of it seems to be mainly fluff. Others are like shreds of material, but also there's a few little objects and they're like gathered into a little pile in front of like the supervisor. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't say any of it looks like really valuable stuff, but maybe there are useful things among it. I guess I might just walk up to the guy and stop and just say, what's going on? What's in the holes? Any number of things, mate. There's gold in the gaps there. Carry on. Just, Is it safe it, to wiggle into the gaps? Oh, you nearly got trapped by some cushions. Of course it is, love. Of course it is. I mean, you want to take a break every now and then. You don't want to become too uh, pliable. But... You know, they're young. They've got their whole lives ahead of them. They've got a long time to get firmed up, you know? Not all of them. It's a bit bleak. (laughs) Yeah, now you can see there's a small pile. They're like useful fabrics. There's other findings in there, like little, like, there are items, but they're all quite, like, kind of, like, mostly humdrum items, right? But there's still objects that could be used. There's like a cup, and there's like maybe like a little toy uh, and, and sort of things. They all look like the kind of things you might find down the back of a sofa. Mm-hmm. Like a yeah. couple of ballpoint pens and a... Exactly. Exactly that kind of stuff. Um, how you how kind long of... since you've been to the temple? Well, this is a sanctioned expedition out. Uh, I think we set off two days ago. We've got another location to go after this, and then we'll be back. Back in time for tea. Gold in the gaps. You, you seem a lot more um, enterprising and optimistic about venturing out into the fray than uh, Mumi we, we met. 
Oh, Moomy, you're listening to Moomy. Well, you'll have filled your ears with all sorts of information about the fray. And some of it will have been very true, and you should definitely listen to it. But some of it, if you look, if you're prepared and you know what you're doing, and I know what I'm doing, lads, all right? Gold in the gaps, then uh, you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. I'm absolutely fine. I've come out here several times, and barely anything has happened to me. Where's your other location you're going to? I'm not sure. I want to say share that with you, if I'm honest. There's all sorts that could be found there, and we do have the, the proper and correct licenses for investigating this kind of thing. I mean, nothing's to stop you having a look yourself. I'm not that proprietary. But if you, I will... I'd rather keep the locations of the other sites to myself, if you don't mind. I will go have a peek on his saying that. I'm, I'm not have crawling. Them. I'm not crawling in while I'm running. But like, put you put your arm. You're gonna have a little yeah. delve, are we? Yeah, have a little, little delve. delve. All right then. Oh, now he'll have a rummage. <laughs> That's now brave after the last rummaging we did. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. Yeah, you thrust your arm into the old uh, into the sofa wall and have a, a rummage round. There's a lot of grit and fluff in there that you can feel as you're. you're uh, there's also like you briefly feel like a like a foot going by your thing and you hear someone go Boy! um and like it doesn't sound like a weird creature but it sounds like one of the kids is like mm. going past them. um uh could you roll me a d6 please candy that is a six okay um you uh find something kind of like very soft and small and withdraw your arm from from the wall um it is a fancifully cut yellow cotton handkerchief and it seems to have the incantations of a spell written on it. Uh, mm. Could you give me, please, a... Um, oh, God, the spell table is so complicated. Mm. D6 times 10 plus D... Oh, it's D66. Just call it that. Um, could you give me a D66 roll, please? 32. Right. Uh, you have a single-use scroll, handkerchief scroll... Mm -hmm. of a fear spell. Ooh. Um, oh my god, what that does. You still have to roll to use it, mm -hmm. um, but and then it'll go away. Um, cool. But you, I'm going to say you have to roll to use it, but you don't have to spend stamina. Stamina, yeah, gotcha. Because I don't think there's a scroll rule in, in, in like the game, but I was like, yeah, that's that's so um, cool. I would also like you to take a tog test at difficulty five, please. So yeah, um, yeah. give me, you need sixes or above on two <laughs> 2d6. That's an 8. I am good. Okay. Absolutely fine. I will like be sitting there looking like closely at this yellow handkerchief for probably like a minute. Sure. Um, as this is happening, um, Queen Katrine, uh, what are you doing? Like, what are you... Because you didn't seem to be too involved in the conversation. It was mainly Kronglin and Nelheim, right? So what, what are you doing while this is going on? Maybe you, I don't know if you're interested at all. I I was going to ask about the cat. Um, sure. well, I'm probably waiting for everyone else to stop talking, so I'm just staring sure. at the cat. Maybe stood over to the side a little bit. Hmm. Sure. Kind of looking up at where the cat is. Um, the cat is kind of like just every now and then like a, a hand comes out and like throws down like a little pen or whatever, right? Uh, and the cat is just like 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 disinterestedly sort of swiping at everything that's coming out underneath this uh, this large cushion it's on. Um, and then all of a sudden, it glances down at you, or just by you, just like off, maybe about there, and hisses. This is seemingly at something just there. I will turn to look. Okay. Um, well, with a piercing and eerie wail, like a sudden gale battering against windows, a pile of white linens next to you has reared up to your height, looking very much like someone who has shrouded themselves in the material. But it kind of clings too closely to their form and reveals horrible details. The limbs contorting unnaturally and the jaw in that fabric face, distending open with a terrifying wideness. Um, can you give me a luck test, please? 
Yeah. Uh, I rolled over, which is bad. It is bad. Um, this thing absolutely shits you up. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really bad jump scare, basically, right? You kind of like stagger backwards and collapse aside. It's worth noting, by the way, no one else can see this. Um, you kind of collapse to the ground, and uh, what, what, like, how are you reacting to it? Are you doing anything to it, or are you just kind of removing yourself from it? Um, I'm sort of stumbling backwards and drawing my sword and vaguely flailing in its direction, but sure. probably more concerned with falling back on my ass. Well, it's like moving a bit, like, kind of like gliding a bit towards you with little twitching movements of what look like maybe their fingers underneath the linens. And your sword, like, catches the tip of it and, like, snags on the linens and, like, drags it away to reveal nothing. The linens kind of go limp and hang on the end of your sword. There's nothing there. The rest of you have just heard Queen Katrine scream loudly, stagger backwards and flail at, at what looks like nothing and now has this like just white fabric draped off the end of her sword. It doesn't look at all like fabric that I found. You Are you all right, Your Majesty? No! no there was something there. And I have bested it. So there is nothing to worry about. I, I will look around at everyone else and see if anyone else acknowledges the something. No, and the, the supervisor guy is like looking, giving a bit of a side eye at Queen Katrine and kind of shuffling away from her a bit. <laughs> Crazy person. Um, Queen Katrine, until... Uh, I, I tell you, it's not in, ca in case you have a minus one malice to all skill checks. Okay. And tog checks. Like, you know, it's a, it's a one, it's one malice in whatever direction is worse for you. Yep. Yep. Come to the okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to stab the linens a little bit with the end of my sword. Yeah. Make yeah. That sounds feel good. Better. Yeah. That sounds like that'll work. Out of interest, does it? That no, no one seems like phased by seeing things like swords out and about. Um, nah. nah, it's just if you've got scissor hands that they're worried about sharp things. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't necessarily seem to be like, oh, he's got scissor hands more as he's a keen inquisitor and he's a like fucking psychopath and he's going to snip soft things off people, um, rather than you know that things were sharp. Well, we're headed to Spillovale. Um, I, what, I was just, the only reason I was asking about where you were headed was if there was a safety in numbers sort of thing, but if you're not oh, interested... We're, then... we're definitely not going that far. And to be honest, I'm not sure I want your company entirely. He's again glancing <laughs> at the Queen, who I can imagine yeah. is kind of like... <laughs> 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 it's all safe. It's all safe, peasants. Do not be alarmed. Are you quite far? Is it quite far? That depends. Okay. Things are not quite that simple out here, Squire. Mm. Yeah. It takes a bit of expertise. A little bit of knowledge to get around. Speaking of which, he kind of like inexpertly whistles and the skinny individuals and youngsters kind of like clamber out of the, the wall. We'll be on our way shortly, if you don't mind. He reaches over and tips all of the findings into a big sack. And so will we, I suppose. Has you got anything else to do here, folks? I'd wish you luck, but it's always bad. Why are we, why are we traveling with this? Oh. So there we go. Are we leaving the sofa scavengers behind then? Yes. Okay. 
for anyone interested, Sofa Scavenger is one of the backgrounds in our new soft scene, available via Kickstarter campaign. Check the link at the top of the chat. Um, <laughs> obviously, a lot of the stuff that features in this is in stuff I pulled from the drafts. Um, so, um, you make your way onwards, and uh, you know it, it's the phrase as it was before. Once you leave this area where the uh, the sofa scavengers could be found, and you make your way forwards for maybe uh, another couple of hours or so, uh, and the surrounding fabrics have become dominated for the past hour by wools, silks, and polyesters, a strange mix of smooth and rough materials to tread on, and every now and then they seem to tremble slightly for no apparent reason. Uh, you turn a corner into a new tunnel that requires you to drop to your knees and shuffle under a tremendously long black blanket patterned with childlike depictions of horses. Uh, and halfway along this considerably um, awkward passage, it arrives. First a tickling, then a prickling on the nape of your neck. Then all the short hairs of your body rise at once and the flashes of light start. Great needling bolts of static spring from the walls visible as crackling arcs between you and the fabric. It stings considerably, and some of the larger ones might do a bit more of that. Perhaps it's time to proceed at pace. Um, how do you proceed at pace? Well, I'm going to need two actions uh, from both of you. In fact, let's reduce that to one action and one luck test. So let's start to see if any of you get zapped by the initial wave of uh, bolts of static. Um, is, can is, I have a... is moving fast the right thing to do here? Is that not is that not going to make it worse? I'm I'm not sure. If I mean, speeding it, up it, is it might do, but slowing down also seems like a relatively bad idea. The static. If, if you storm... stop moving, they still they still zap. Oh us. yeah 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 yeah. It seems okay. to be external from your actions a bit. Okay. Like, it's like a storm passing through, right? Um, so I'm going to uh, need a couple of things first. Uh, sorry, Sam, you're going to say something. I was going to say I will ask the captain to check that tog meter and see if that's doing a thing or if it's not to do with that. It's making no noise. So, um, I'll look at it. And it goes... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you uh, first of all, I'm going to need a luck test from everyone. Now, there's something I should mention about luck tests actually, because I've been saying I've been saying to people make a luck test. You can actually choose to not make a luck test and suffer the consequences of a thing. Maybe you want to save your luck for a, a later opportunity, maybe, oh, you know, whatever. But either way, I'm asking for a luck test so you can either make it and try and beat whatever's happening, or you could just let it go. It's up to you. Luck roll under. Luck roll is equal to or under. And if you make a luck roll, you have to reduce your luck by one. Mm. But yeah. still and make a note of what the, what the top Value the start was, yeah. yeah. I succeeded. I just rolled a three there under the nine. Okay. I failed. I think you, you reduce your luck regardless of whether you succeed or yeah. fail. Correct. I drew even. Is that... Um... That's a success. Okay. Uh, but again, obviously reduce it by one. Uh, and yeah. you succeed. So it's only Queen Katrine who has failed then. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so, uh, I would like you to take, uh, one stamina damage from a particularly nasty bolt of, um, static, um, Queen Katrine, and I would also like you to take a TOG test at level five. So you need sixes or above. You do well with these TOG tests, folks. I succeed. And that's another one. That's wow. another success. The hey. six took into account my malice, didn't it? Uh, no. So it should have been at a seven. I you. roll equal to. What did you roll? A seven? Yes. Then you're fine. Yes, good. Yeah, then you're fine. Uh, yeah, you need to shift your die up or down in whatever is the worst direction for you by one. So... Um, and um, what I would like for you all now, now that this initial wave has passed, is you all need to make a skill check of some kind to get to the end of this static storm without having that what just happened to John happen to all of you again. So have a look at your advanced skills, and I can be pretty convinced here 
by, you know, unless it makes no sense. Like, sword fighting is obviously bad. I get out a large metallic object. Um, but, you know, let's let, let's have, uh, I, I'm pretty open to ideas. And let's start with, uh, let's start with the queen, who's probably got the most motivation of all of you to move on as fast as possible. I would like to, I think I'm going to try and argue with tracking. Sure. Trying to like find the easiest way down the tunnel. Yeah. From the, the silks underfoot. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fine. Uh, give me that skill roll and obviously give, don't forget to give yourself a malice of one. Even with the malice, that is a pass. Perfect. You scamper out. You're, you're the first, in fact. You scamper out at the end of the tunnel uh, and sort of get yourself to your feet and go, oh. Um, and just as you're letting out a big exclamation of breath, um, you feel something moving and rising. Just, just on the edge of your vision to the left. I immediately swing with my sword. Absolutely. You swing round. And as you do so, as you kind of turn like, ah, 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 kind of like in a more bold sense, the thing like lurches towards you and this wail just like envelops you right in front of your face. And it seems to be like, just like it's going to consume you, like it's going to drain you. Over, and then your sword hits it and it collapses to the floor. Um, That's a minus two malice now. That's not um, just succeeding on uh, getting out of there. Yeah, yeah but that's that. You know, that's Ooh. that. Again, none of you see. Mm -hmm. You just see Queen Katrine go ah! and kind of mm -hmm. like, like go ha ha, ah! and uh, rear back with like a pile of white linens at their feet. Um, but regardless of that, um, Krongle Pludge Funkler, how are you getting out of this tunnel without getting zapped? Um, I don't think I have any skills, given Second Sight or Astrology doesn't seem helpful. I think Second Sight might be. It could be, helpful. yeah, Magical yeah. Vision. And, okay, I'll use Second you can Sight. Imagine, you can maybe see where the zaps were. I don't know. You know. Yeah, go on then. I'll do a Second Sight. Uh, which I fail. Well then, Never in mind. that case, <laughs> take one stamina damage as you get zapped, and give mm -hmm. me a TOG check at a uh, difficulty of six, you need six. So, hang on. I need six. Uh, is... I'm just confused a second. Yeah, you need sixes or... Oh, God, I've completely forgotten how it works. I'm blocked. Is it equal to I'm completely Rwanda? blocked. Mm -hmm. You need... Well, you need higher... John, help me! <laughs> What's in the... Wait, it start from the beginning. Tog, tog checks. I've forgotten how they work again. You need... To where's the it's, sheet? You need to if a tog check is difficulty six, it's, it's you need ro to roll roll, the roll over the target. Seven, seven is or right. Or above. You need seven a seven or, or above. Okay. okay, sorry, that's a ten. I'm good. You're good. Still acing these tog checks. Nailing these tog checks, folks. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but you still take one one stamina mm -hmm. from the zap. And I'm still um, in it. No, no, you're out. Oh, I'm out. Good. Yeah, you just did shit. You just didn't fail to predict the zaps entirely and walked right into one. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Nelheim, you're next. Uh, what role are you making? Run. That seems very appropriate. Um, yeah. Yeah, give us, give us that role then, please. Uh, so that is a five which meets my skill. Check. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You managed to, to run out of there and you kind of like barrel out. Krongle Pludge Funkler is just in front of you going like, ah, and like clinging a, a zapped hip. And Queen Katrine is kind of going <laughs> with her sword, like seemingly at nothing. And you'll get starting to get a bit worried about that. Um, and you kind of barrel out and Captain Kakajin is behind you. What uh, skill are you going to use Captain Kakajin to escape the, the zappy zap? I think again for for, for the cap, it's got to be second sight, really. I don't have much else mm -hmm. that applies. No, that sounds good to me. Why don't you make a uh, a roll for your second sight? I have a two in second sight and a skill of measly four. So Sixes are under. That's three and a one, so I've made it. Absolutely. You managed to uh, gunk and slime your way out of the uh, tunnel without any significant zaps. Or maybe it's just that like you're getting zapped a lot by a little, but you don't really think, you don't know what the fuss is about. It's 
kind of a weird thing that the others seem to not dislike the electricity course <laughs> the body. Um, I imagine Captain Kakajin is very well grounded. You know, you're, lots of you is touching the ground, so that, that's probably better, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely what you but want. Famously, like, that's what you want. Sam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the opposite of good. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we did kind of establish he slightly floats, so we could have said that, but yeah, you know, it's nah. fine. Um, uh, but yeah, you emerge from the tunnel, uh, absolutely fine. You know, it's all good. Um, so a couple of you got zapped, but mostly seem to have um, resisted the uh, the static storm quite quite handily, actually. Um, so, uh, is anyone at any point going to mention anything to uh, <laughs> Katrina about her behaviour? Or are we just moving on and hoping that the royalty stops going through whatever inherited kind of like is my question degrading is, you, brain disease? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to be obviously able no, to no, comprehend. You, you probably but, think it's normal. But me, yeah, exactly. It's just more strange human behaviour. But so have the rest of us seen the sheet fall right no no no, no. You, you've it's never seen nothing. it you you just right. see it in time for katrine to be like like flailing a pile of inanimate white yeah. linens i mean i think kakajan has no basis to think that's stranger than you know the the mysterious companions chirping or or anyone else's anything really yeah since i was second up there i might just turn to the queen and go oh yeah, the uh, soft furnishings get into you, Queenie. I have dealt with the problem. You are very welcome. Mm-hmm. Now let's move on. What problem? I will take no further questions. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Um, and it sounds like we're proceeding onwards. Um, and uh, as you um head uh along kind of like the further tunnels and, and corridors, uh, you don't immediately find anywhere as low as that kind of like static storm tunnel yet. So you're able to like maybe stretch yourselves out a bit and, and be a bit more uh reasonable with the way you're walking. Um, and uh, eventually. Uh, you emerge at the intersection of several taller tunnels, and um, you see the, uh, the sort of first person you've seen in a while here. Uh, there is a figure stands standing, lounging at an intersect at the intersection, leaning against a shaylong that lies on its side. He is wearing a long, elaborately designed poncho in vibrant green and gold, and a wide-brimmed hat. Uh, the one hand that emerges from the poncho is flipping a plastic button over and over again casually. Hello. <laughs> I, I like Nell, I'm being the greeter <laughs> by I I can tell you how you'll die. Um as you uh, say hello, the uh, the figure sort of tilts his face slightly to you, um, and the, there's a shadow over his face from his wide-brimmed hat. Um, but you see that under, kind of deeper in the shadow, his face seems to be covered with some kind of stitch work, uh, and the shadow seems to be hiding a conglomeration of suspiciously fabric-like textures and colours. Uh, between said stitch work. Also, the first time he kind of like glances up at you under the brim of the hat, there seems to be, you don't quite hear the music, but you kind of just get a sense of it from some like sourceless sort of place, vaguely like a kind of like weird, weirdly diegetic sense that from somewhere, somehow, uh, a noise like <whistles> happens. Um, Strangers. I suppose we are. Who are you? Oh. Many people call me many different names. Well, hello, many different names. You can probably just call me the Vagabond. 
I'm regretting having a character that can't really like give sass because <laughs> that name deserves so much ridicule. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll look at my compass and go, well, um, we were going that way, Vagabond. Um, and kind of just take a few steps, like trying to kind of walk past. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, that's a compass to Spillerville. Could be a compass to anywhere. I'm just saying, if that's where y'all are heading, that's the wrong tunnel to be taking. But it's keeps flipping the plastic button. But it's kind of that way. Not. I'll point in another direction and go, but that's... Congo plush my is confused. The compass can point in a direction, friend, but cannot account for the undercurrents and changes of this place. I myself am more than familiar with these rotations, and I can tell you, that other tunnel, that'll lead you to Blue Blanket Lake, and that's where you want to be heading. Is that tunnel. on the way? to Spillerville, or is that merely a recommendation? It will be on the way to Spillerville any moment now. Try as you might, you can't outrun the soft. I'm sorry, aren't we on the, is it, this all the soft? What do you mean outrun the soft? Isn't the soft where we are? The fray is where you are. The fray do be changing. How do you know? Do you have a a gift for seeing things? I've been around, ma'am. I know a few things. And I know that in the time it'll take you to find your way to Spillerville, Blue Blanket Lake will be further along the way you're heading. Um, where are you heading, Vagabond? I currently have myself no final destination in mind. I'll be around. He sort of uh, tips his hat to you and walks kind of past you into sort of the way you've come from. And as he does so, he stops briefly next to the Queen and says... You are carrying something you should not be. And then walks on. Wait, what? What's the what's the thing? That's him. Well, clearly he's some <laughs> sort of a Republican. I I <laughs> <laughs> That means a different thing to the Queen. Yes. Let's yeah. just put that yeah. out. <laughs> I will go, damn, I was really hoping you'd go one of those two ways and then we could go with him since he seemed to kind of know what he was doing. But yeah, he definitely pointed you to a tunnel that wasn't uh, like the one that the compass is pointing. Do we trust the weird patchwork man with the cowboy theme or not? <laughs> What's a cowboy? <laughs> Which stranger do we trust? They're equally... Trustworthy and untrustworthy. What do you think, little What captain? does your talk mean I, to say? I, w I would say that the way in which the Vagabond was talking about things kind of matched how the Noble Donna talked about things. She also said that the fray changes. And he seemed to think that you'd be like sort of skipping the line if you went to the lake. Does that make sense? Like things were going to change. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, if you went to the lake to first, it would like move in front of. Mm -hmm. That's roughly the vibe you got. Yeah, yeah. But maybe he yeah. has until ill intentions. You don't mm -hmm. know. Or maybe that's clearly the most wrong. central member of our party. I want to hear the captain's opinion on this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, mm. I think in, in something that might approximate a shrug, um, 
I I I I think the 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 cap's just going to sort of start um uh start moving down the the tunnel that the stranger recommended because you know it just I I think it's it's easier for him to or for for it to trust a mm. you know uh, a, a a local than uh, than some hunk of metal. I'll go with that. Follow you down that tunnel. Yeah, Nelime is inclined to trust someone who seems to have some sort of foreknowledge. Absolutely. Between uh -huh. will also go down, but will keep a very firm grip on her crown, just in case this is some sort of an anti-monarchist plot. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, you make your way down the tunnel that the Vagabond pointed out, and um, as uh, you do so, you start to, like, feel something you haven't really felt for a while, uh, while you've been in the soft, which is a sort of slight breeze um, ahead of you. And before long, you emerge into a quite interesting new place. A uh, And you know what? This is some of the first art completed for this game. Um, and an original con one of our team, Jack, came up with this almost entirely out of nothing. Uh, and I really liked it. And John clearly really liked it because he used it as the first bit of art. Um, but there we go. That is what you see ahead of you. A vast cavern opens up, striped purple sheets far overhead, gently wafting in a discernible breeze. To your slightly frazzled senses, they seem as though a cross between a colossal circus tent and actual evening light made purple by the setting of a star. Filling the cavern almost as far as your eyes can see are blue sheets and blankets and mattresses gliding over each other slowly with an odd susurrus that strangely almost replicates the wash of waves on a windy lake shore. Out across the mass of blue fabrics are islands of more bulky furnishings rising to tall piled columns that hold up the softly swaying sky. On at least one column you can see small, suspiciously feline shapes clambering and jumping between couches set at a towering height. Gliding across the blue in the middle distance are what look like small fishing boats. I'd like to approach the lake and just see if I can test the blanket slash water and just try and get, understand like how does blanket slash wet like what like what sure. is this? How well, does this first, work? Is it first like a all, water bed? <laughs> yeah, for, it feels quite like a water bed in that like the things you're treading on are very kind of like stinky and soft and pliable, but they're definitely not wet. Like there's no wetness to it. They're moving and they're shifting and kind of like wobbling over each other. But it is it is definitely possible to walk on the lake. Having said that, the mm -hmm. your footing is not going to be great, you know? And you were in a patch of soft before where your footing wasn't great and it wasn't a wonderful experience. So you think you could like walk yeah. across it, but you it'd certainly not be too it wouldn't be terribly easy. I would like to look around and see if there's something we could float on across the lake or a boat. The uh, yeah, the only things you can see are there are some boats out on the lake. They seem to be crewed. Uh, you can't see any along the shore, but to get to definitely to get close enough to speak to anyone on the boats, you would have to make it at least to like the first island you can see. Um, so you, and that would have to be walking, you'd imagine, unless you have mm. another solution. So we can't like. I'll try and yell and wave them down. I guess I'll try. There, are, you you know what? Go ahead and try. You think they're a bit far away? They are mm -hmm. like they're quite a ways out. You know. Uh, we have to get to that island, do we? I don't really have enough to fashion some sort of raft of put my stuff. That's Ooh. not enough on its own. Hang on a second. I do have an idea, actually. Um, and I am going to attempt to use my assume shape spell, where I can assume the shape of anything from the size of a cup to the size of a piano. Small boats the size of a piano, very small paddling boat. Sure. So yeah, I'll yeah. give it a go. Oh my <laughs> Why god. Not? The, the, the crongle crack. Yep, let's give it a go. This is a uh, four stamina, so I'll spend that stamina. Yeesh. 
and <laughs> one off a uh, newts table. <laughs> it was an 11. Ooh. Well, it could be a lot worse, huh? Um, a lot worse. I wanted yeah. that to work so much. <laughs> mm-hmm. Me too. Uh, Krongle briefly becomes very wide and flat, and then something makes a fizzing noise, and he's back in his normal shape. It's worth Krongle. saying in the description; it's extremely distressing. <laughs> yeah, that really hurt Krongle. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, no <laughs> mechanical will... effects. Just it I'll... really, really hurt. I'll return to my shape and I'll just cut. I haven't explained to anyone what I'm doing, by the way. No, that just yeah. happens suddenly. And then I'm just on the beach going, ow, ow. And I cut up on my side, little fetal position. Like, I regret that. Yeah. You're lucky. You ended up like you did before. I'm like the poor captain. You should be grateful. It's just <laughs> a lot of pain. Ow. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, are there any loose like sheets that are sizable enough that we could feasibly like you like that could accommodate the group right so do you, I, are you thinking I like have... fashioning a kind of raft in a sense but then also doing something a bit daft with a spell okay to, so... Yeah, you can you can definitely find more or less any kind of furnishings you want to find. It's a very large shoreline you're on. You can definitely find anything you want to find that you think you might be able to use. All right, feel free to shoot this down. Is what... Too mad. I, I would also say I don't know if this makes makes a difference, Alex. Is uh, yeah. you you obviously saw that I had the the seven dimensional sheet, so mm. you're like there's other stuff there, and like I've got things like a collapsible tent, which I think we stayed in because we had, we had like an overnight stay in the previous oh. things like i definitely have a couple of other things like that that are more like you know canvasy kind of material as well if that might be what you're after or if you want to try something a bit more like out there who knows what the seven dimensional sheet does um, i the yeah. tent the tent has promise if the tent can accommodate all um four of us then well, what what are you looking to do and I'll what i'm an looking to do <laughs> is use the assassin's dagger spell which says uh, the wizard whispers to an object. That object then seeks out and vigorously and repeatedly bumps into the desired target. So if I were to, if we were to all get into a tent and then I could, you set the, the target of it as the island, right? would it sort of shuttle us? I'm, I hate to stamp on an amusing idea but I think establishing that the assassin's dagger is strong enough to, to do pull the four of you along is setting fair. a precedent I'm not going to be happy with at some point yeah. down the line. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Where you're like, well, I can cast the assassin's dagger and it can just punch through the wall, right? Like, Because it, it says feels... bump softly, which, which mm. I imagine means it's just not very Yeah, powerful, it feels spiritually right? wrong for an assassin's dagger to be against an inanimate object too, doesn't it? Surely it's got to be a person or something you're trying to kill or get. No, I think uh, it, it says no, you can set any anything. target you want. So oh, okay, fair enough. Fine. Never mind. It's no, just in the, theory, it's fine. I just think in execution, it's, it's not I, meant for falling, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if I establish that precedent, it's going to lead to all kinds of problems. For crazy me. things. Um, we get our own spaceship. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, like it looks walkable to the first island to be able to yell at a fishing boat. It's just you're going to have to be careful. That's all. Are there along the shorelines? Mm-hmm. Are there loose pillows and cushions and the like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All sorts of furnishings. I'm going to test by picking one up, throwing it onto the water, and then mm-hmm. standing on the pillow. Okay, you does do it... so. No, carry on. What were you going to say? Does it sink or does it stay where it is? It um, slowly, but noticeably turns blue and starts shifting and wobbling along with the rest of the furnishings on the surface of the lake. I will get back onto the shore and say, well, I suppose one of you is just going to have to run for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, one of you could could do it. It doesn't need all of you necessarily. I'm staying down, curled up in a ball now, deliberately saying, ow, to stop myself being volunteered. <laughs> I'm looking uh, around at the lack of movement 
and feeling extremely resigned and reluctant but we'll start heading out and try to like well, i'll make it i'll make a run for it i'll give it a go absolutely well you do have the run skill right so there we go um Okay, just all I want from you, uh, Nelime, to kind of like hop and skip and jump your way across this surface is is just that run check. I just, oh, that's all I need. That's all I need. Two ones. That's definitely under. That's definitely under. Make a tog check at difficulty five. <laughs> Wait, if Inga rolls two ones, is that like a crit? <laughs> and then a ten on the tog check. Ah, there we go. Um, <laughs> Nelime, in a surprisingly optimistic event for how pessimistic she is, um, you bound your way across Blue Blanket Lake and you make your way to the first of those islands there that you can see. Um, like, it, you have an odd feeling when, when you reach the actual land, you feel kind of more seasick because everything's stu- suddenly like still underfoot. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it lo- it looks as it does there. And nearby, you can see uh, a fishing boat. It's not quite, it's not as small as that one. It's like a larger one with a number of people kind of crewing it, um, moving moving around on the surface of it. But they're definitely within within earshot of you. Hello. Can you, can you, can you see me? Hello. Hello. Who's that then? I, I'm Nella. I've got some friends at shore, but. Can you help? Ha- can you help us? Probably not. I mean, are you wanting to get al- over the lake? Yeah. I, well, actually, we didn't really. Yes, I think so. Well, it it, it looks like you don't even have a boat. No, but you do. And can you help? Well, if you don't mind me saying, it's quite poor planning, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All, all, all right. Well, we'll we'll come pick you up, and then we'll come to the shore for your friends. Oh dear! Oh, oh dear! Um, I rolled a, a, a <laughs> I rolled a, a mien check for the the uh, fishers there, and it was very friendly. So there we go. Um, the uh, the the boat kind of veers around on the surface, and you can see they're kind of like poling it along, um, and it skims along to where you are. It's quite big. It's quite a nice little well-made boat. Um, and uh, the the guy who called out to you goes, oh, "Go on then, give us your hand." And kind of like leans down to kind of like help you aboard. Uh, and you notice as he does so that his arm is like. There are stitches all the way up it, held together by buttons. Um, and as you look uh, up and around and over, you can see that, in fact, all the members of the crew have buttons and stitching and material all over their bodies, uh, festooned among kind of more regular skin and flesh body parts, uh, an example of which um, might be represented by this this art. They seem otherwise perfect, you know, perfectly kind of fine. Um, how long have you been out here? Are you from from the soft? I mean, not originally, like, but been here a fair while. Oh, don't you mind all that? He like reaches out and grabs your arm and kind of like heaves you up onto the boat. So, so you like it here then? If you've if you've stayed, it's a living. The boat skims out over the surface and and rapidly moves closer to the shoreline. Uh, I think just a, a, along the way, there, there's probably a couple of like very minor little predictions that like, oh, you're not going to sleep well tonight, sort of level of you know, like you know, bad news, bad news predictions. Um, as this chit chat along along the way. Um, Absolutely, uh, <laughs> uh, you hear someone at the back of the boat going, 
fucking last time we helped someone who just calls out to us. Um, and the boat kind of pulls into the shore, and uh, the man who originally talks to you goes, Go on then, in you get. We've got fishing to do, you know. Yeah, we'll climb in. Uh, thank you. Do, do they have fish in their boat, Matt? Uh, yes, they have, um, like, plushy fish. <laughs> Can I just pick up one of the plushy fish and go, what, what do you do with these? I mean, we eat it. Can I kind of poke it a bit and check if it's got stuffing inside it? It does absolutely have stuffing inside it. I will nod and stay quiet. <laughs> All right. On our way. The boat starts kind of skimming quite fast uh, across the surface of the lake. And you see a number of kind of like islands pass you by. You see a number of other um, fishing boats. Um, you do pass uh, within the next like half hour or so. You go past what seems to be an island with some kind of impromptu dwelling built on it, sort of like a manor house, inexpertly built with mattresses, bean bags, and uh, large body pillows. Um, who is carrying the uh, the uh, assassin's dagger and pillow combo? It's Kakujin, uh, right. It, it's Kakujin. And What I actually realised is that it's there's no actual physical dagger. It's just that there was a pillow on right. which that spell was cast. So it's just a right. Pillow yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a pillow. Move. Well, the pillow starts tugging quite strongly in the direction of the impromptu manor house. Right. Okay. I think Kakujin sort of will hold it aloft and sort of show it uh, prominently. So that the others can see it sort of tugging away in the direction of the uh, that house. Who's in the house? To the crew. No bloody idea, mate. I think that might be a stop of ours. It, oh, is that right, you... Captain? Yeah, you want off here? Yes. All right. He uh, pulls the the sort of boat up to the shoreline near the manor house, and gestures and says, "So this is where you're going." Yes, uh, I guess so. Oh, are we at the end of the lake, nearly, Matt, or is it just no? The you're about. You're. It looks like it's maybe in the middle. You can't see any of the shorelines. Are there any other boats around? You don't want to stay here, do you? We're not a taxi service, you know. All right, just be quick about it. Thank you. Gratitude. All right, all right. Kind of hustles you off the boat. Uh, you find yourself on this island standing in front of this, uh, as I say, impromptu dwelling. Um, you can't see anything else about it, but you can hear sort of odd um, sort of defective technological noises coming from inside the manor house. Little kind of like springs popping and kind of like clunks and whirring noises. I think it's that fellow again. He, he disappeared. He disappeared, didn't he? Do we need to be quiet here? Although, if we take him by surprise, he may just disappear again. And if he can disappear again, then he may be a good avenue off the soft if he doesn't disappear. There's no way you can argue with that. For multiple reasons. <laughs> for, for, for one, for one uh, I, I, I can't comprehend it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, so <laughs> so we should announce ourselves. Do we? I don't know how you knock on a pillow door. I I'm just going to like wide open palm, and like 
against the front door. There is uh, there is no response. The mechanical noises inside are quite loud, and you can occasionally hear what sounds like a very exasperated person among it. You're pretty sure that like if it like if it's as loud in there as it sounds as it is from the outside, they probably cannot hear you. Go on, Miss Queen. You can introduce yourself too, right? I yes. Of course. Yes. Okay. I will push the door open. Sure. Um, You uh, step through and there's a kind of like quite grand uh, hallway, um, although all the bits of it are sort of falling apart and obviously built of mattresses, beanbags and large body pillows. Um, There's uh, a room off to one side, what appears to be a kind of maybe a sort of impromptu dining room, perhaps, a combination dining room and study. Um, There are a number of uh, sort of large cushioned platforms along which quite a a serious um, spread of of nice looking food and drink is arrayed. Uh, And next to that is a large weird metallic device with lots of kind of like blinking lights and buttons on it. Um, and next to that, in turn, is Nostrificans, the mathemologist, bearded, robed, the same as he was before. Um, Katrine, you probably think you probably need to step into the room and maybe shout a bit to get his attention, if that's what you need. I will step in, and I will shout, assuming that... It... Yeah. Well, before you do so, um, you kind of step into the room and immediately, like... There's just this motion to your right hand side, like white, blurry sort of motion. <laughs> I, I, uh, I think it. Yeah, I think I just flail out. I, I'm too surprised to go for the sword, probably. Sure, absolutely. You reach around and kind of flail out. the The linen creature is like leaning into you and almost like seems like it's enfolding your face with its screaming visage. You kind of flail and cry out and uh, the thing again like billows back and just drops to the ground as uh, a bunch of discarded white linen. So that's a minus three malice now, I think, right? Yeah. To everything. Yeah, 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 that sounds about right. Um, And as you do so, you kind of like let out a cry and and, um, immediately alert Nostrificans to your presence. He uh, wheels round and uh, raises his uh, his hand at you. Uh, Cursed interlopers, begone from my presence! Um, he reaches round and taps at a large green switch on his machine. It lets out an odd farting noise, and uh, he bellows, oh, "Shit! It wrong fucking button!" and then vanishes. <laughs> I didn't know that was how you did royal introductions, Queen. It's like... not. It's not. I was attacked. We had Still, some sort of regard. That's now two on the old Nostrificans one shot unlock uh, count, right? So um, there you go. Uh, you all saw Queen Katrine just turn and flail and kind of go Aah! at nothing, by the way. Uh, or seemingly it may be some linen that was just hanging by the side of the, the door and is now just in a pile on the floor. So she's losing it, clearly. You, um, you definitely weren't attacked. I was. Look. I'll wave the linens at him. <laughs> sure. Can, I will look awkwardly at the others. Can can Kakajan in any way utilise the second side skill on... Queen Katrine to try to understand why she keeps doing this odd stuff. Yeah, yeah, a- absolutely. Why don't you give me a, okay. a second sight roll? Because, like, it's starting to stand out. Oh, yeah, it's starting to. <laughs> and also, it's worth noting if you get into combat again, Queen Katrine is like your your main fighter. Actively so- hindrance. Yeah. 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 Okay, right. Let's give this a go. Uh, right. Second sight. I have two. My skill is four. There's no way for me to like push no or anything boost. in, no, in no, no. Troika, like is that. there? No, yeah. no. If you've got a low skill, you're pretty fucked. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty fucked. So that's a nine. 
because I rolled bad when I made this character. So yeah, yeah that's a nine at, uh, over uh, over six. So yeah, no, you you can't detect anything. She's just being real weird. It, I mean, if nothing else, that seems thematic. But yeah, she would have absolutely no idea. Yeah, absolutely. Why humans are weird? Um, this might just be normal behavior. Maybe you should start emulating it. I guess I, I think now I'm seeing enough mad, mad, your majesties in court over the time. Um, yeah, this is just part of the course. As I far think... as eccentricities go, this is fairly low down on the list. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no one's getting executed. Like it, that's exactly yes. right. <laughs> Execution <laughs> withdrawal. I think I think Krongle Plush Funkler can kind of see you're losing your mind. It just doesn't really care that much. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I am going to ask uh, so, for something, though. Um, Katrine, can you make me whatever? Do you have any advanced skill that would be like some kind of like mystical insight or something like that? I have awareness, but that's that'll that's do. It. That'll do. That'll do. Why don't you give me an awareness roll? Obviously, with your malice. Of yes. Yeah. So I will only succeed this with a double one. I want you to be aware of this. I do not roll a double one. No. Sure. So, uh, what we're going to do? The uh, the patchwork fisher folk are, are waiting for you outside. There's nothing in this room but a lot of what looks like some very nice food and drink, um, and the bleeping machine, which honestly looks way above your pay grades. I will grab some, take food some nice drink. food and drink. <laughs> Anyone who wants to grab some more rations can roll a d6 and add that number to it. Yeah. Five rations. I'm going to eat one while I'm here too because I use someone that spell. Sounds okay, good. Six in total after eating. And I regain one. I also got five rations, which is good because. Nice. I used some earlier, and I only got one stamina pack. <laughs> so, um, do we get our stamina refilled while this is happening, or is it this just getting? Revenge? No, you just get that number of rations. Okay. I chose to use them. Yeah, I will use. Can, can we use uh, like Three two? Three a day, you can, so I can, you can use up to three a day, and each one is a d6 of stamina. That you okay, have. so I'll use I'll use the remaining two of my because I'm quite low. Sure. Kakajin maybe just like picks up a bunch of food, and then there's just like yeah. I I feel like he just inserts it directly into yeah. like in a mm -hmm. jelly like way. Maybe there's like a table of food, and Kakajin just like slimes down the table, and then there's no food. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, okay, are we are we exiting from the from mm -hmm. the manor house and getting back on the fisher? F yeah, uh, the captain kind of goes, all right, all right, let's go, let's go, and the skiff kind of like moves off uh, across the surface of the lake, um, making its way to the far shoreline. Um, as it uh, as it does so, there is kind of a, a couple of moments um, where like the boat seems to like bounce up and down a bit. And the fisher folk kind of like look around each other and then kind of shrug and uh, move on. And then, as you're maybe about, you, you're kind of like seeing the shoreline sort of like uh, closing on the horizon. So you're, you're not too, you think maybe you're about like five or 10 minutes away from making your way to the opposite side when the boat gives a great big heave and like lifts off the water and then smacks back down to it. And uh, one of the fisher folk kind of like scrabbles and grabs like a big spear that's over on the side of the uh the the kind of like railing of the boat and another one shouts Callan Perkala Callan Perkala um and a huge bright blue uh fuzzy stuffed toy style shark rears up from underneath the lake and smacks its mass down onto the surface of the boat and i think we'll take a break um at that point we'll take another 10 minute break folks uh join us then uh when we'll find out what happens when a plushy shark tries to eat you um and also 
because the Queen is starting to suffer a lot from this now, I feel like I'm happy dropping... I'm going to drop a little hint to Queen Katrine. Someone has already told you what you need to do. That's all I'm going to say. John has already figured it out. John's figured but... it out. Okay. okay. But I don't think the Queen has got there yet. Fair enough. That's absolutely fine with me. Um, let's find out how long it will take and how many of you will die uh, before that happens. Um, yeah. 10-minute break, folks. We'll see you soon.